Bonjour. So, it, it, I don't know why it suddenly struck me that, uh, this week that as a comic collector, you're just picking up, I, I, I don't know what, what particular genres, and I, I know I've, I've done a video um, about DC versus Marvel, but within that, what, what characters float your boat? Do you just collect Batman or do you just collect Spider-Man, etc., etc.? One thing I've noticed this week, it did, it, it did suddenly strike me that through like my local my local comic shop and good old eBay and a couple of other you know little junk shops and places, bits and pieces assorted. You're a comic collector. What struck me is those those buzzwords that we have been overcome by, which are diversity and inclusion <laughs> in recent years, and specifically pertaining to what I love, which is comic books first of all, and then film and TV mostly based on that, the genre stuff, and how it's been under attack, how how things got to be race swapped, gender swapped, everything's swapped and changed, and but everything that's gone before has got to be changed, nothing, nothing new created, nothing new created, but what struck me is, just collecting it, and I've got a little sample of, of just comic books that I've picked up, little collections I've been picking up, just in the past couple of weeks, that it's always been there. Now, I'm not saying it's been perfect. And my first, first example, Ms. Marvel. Now, reading this wonderful, I picked up issues 1 to 23 of this run, right, from 1977. And, yes, okay, could you, could you put her, could, could you put her in an outfit in an outfit like that now. No, no, you couldn't. And we wouldn't expect we wouldn't expect anyone to do it. But in the late 70s, this was Carol, this was Carol Danvers. And I know they've updated the character, but and we know, you know, I'm not gonna go there with Brie Larson. But all I'm saying is I, I had so so this is late 70s. This is, I don't know if there's any, yeah, it's 70, yeah, it's, it's seven, no, actually, yeah, it's 76, 77. Where this Miss Marvel stuff, and you've got, um, at, the, at the end of this run, um, I really, look, Vision. Vision's there, look, in this one. And one thing I noticed was, I, I, I didn't, I'd forgotten that Chris Claremont, was was cutting his teeth on this um in the later issues um it's just oh here we go look we've got modok on that one but what i'm saying is marvel were doing because this i want to get into something about comics as a medium has always been diverse and inclusive maybe not to the extremes that are expected in this part of the 21st century. But this is the late 70s, introducing, alongside uh, Kirby, I think it was Stanley and Jack Kirby had already done Black Panther, already introduced um, Falcon in this era of Marvel Comics. You've got a blind man, aka Daredevil. So, I know it's not perfect, but what my point is, the ones that are screaming out loud now, that, oh my God, you know, all right, maybe, I mean, the, cost, the costume there has been like nicely, nicely coloured in. It's not like, it's, it's more like a swimsuit uh, than a bikini. <laughs> Nevertheless, this was a female superhero. You know, I don't know, it's being written and drawn by you know, white heterosexual men, and oh my God, how, how, how far do we go? How far do we go? But I thoroughly enjoyed, I, I just thoroughly enjoyed going back to an era where, you know, a bit like the um, 
Wonder Woman TV series. You know, where there's a, there's a certain, it's almost like a certain innocence to it, a naivety. But underneath it, in all seriousness, underneath it, we we can we can see the need for diversity and inclusion, and I think it's more about di diversifying. And from from that, what, what I'm trying comic comics as a medium is, is there's everything. So from superheroes, we something else I picked up sci-fi. So Eclipse, Eclipse Comics in the late, um, in the early 80s, Eclipse Comics, independent, one of the early independents. So you had Eclipse Comics, you had Pacific, um, and then Marvel done their ep epic comics, kind of creator own lines. But this, this by P. Craig Russell, just pure science fiction and fantasy. And I, I think it's just really weird that I picked that up in a like kind of junk shop, antique shop kind of thing, alongside this, Stuart the Rat. <laughs> now, Steve Gerber, who wrote this, um, who had just come off of Howard the Duck, alongside other, alongside other stuff, I mean, his blurbs on the back here, I could read it out if I had a different pair of glasses on, but yeah, Defenders, Man Thing, Tales of the Zombie, you you get the you get the picture of what Steve Gerber done, but for me, it was it was Howard the Duck that that that, reson, that resonated with me. And Gene Colan done the art on this, most famously remembered for Daredevil for a long long run on Daredevil. I think it's something like fifty issues. Not just that, Gene Colan's absolutely beautiful artwork. In fact, I've got just there. You probably can't see it very well, to be fair. Um, is a personalised sketch from Gene Colan from two, the year the year two thousand, after um, uh, sadly nine eleven, where we did a, a sketch of Daredevil for me. Anyway, I digress. The diversity of storytelling and genres. So I don't know what you'd call this a mutant. A mutant suit because this is the story about a, a geneticist that gets mixed up with the DNA of a rat. Uh, you've got Craig, you've got P. Craig Russell's Night Music, science fiction, science fiction and fantasy. You've got Ms. Marvel, who's pure, pure soup, pure superhero stuff. Um, and look at old J. Jonah Jameson was used as the, as the nowadays. I mean, I'd, I'd love. Actually, thinking about it, I'd love to do a deep dive on this comic and see if we can translate that into modern day. J. Jonah Jameson with his cigar. Straight away, you can't smoke in, in the office now. <laughs> Straight away. Um, and how, but, but he's used as this, as, as this device, as this male patriarchal um, device against feminism in the mid late 70s uh, and it worked mary jane's in there because it, carol danvers is um a, a journalist working not for the not for the bugle but for a magazine that jj has has got on the side anyway i, I just i just love that stuff but connected connected to that just recently i picked up alongside all of the Guardians of the Galaxy stuff and the Annihilation, this Nova, I mean, the same era as Ms. Marvel, I've got the Nova collection coming because I've got a few issues. I've got a few odd issues here. But someone on eBay had, had the old, oh, what's it? But when Abney and Lanny were doing, were doing this, look, just look at these, just look at these covers and wonder why. You know, there's no need to wonder why Marvel was such a powerhouse. I don't know why they didn't use Nova, to be fair. I mean, that looks like Gamora to me. I haven't read this that, that particular issue yet. So I've just been picking these up. Here's some scrolls. That doesn't look half as exciting as the TV show, does it? 
And the, this was, I think this was around 2007, 2008. Uh, these Novas, you know, just, just look at these. Just look at covers like this, look. That, that's just, just rock and roll, you know, when Marvel was, was properly, properly on it. Um, but like, like I say, back, back to the diverse nature. Like I say, may, maybe not the inclusive nature, but certainly, I mean, within this story, there were there 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 are female um, Nova uh, Nova Core. So it's just just always I don't know. It's just always been there. They've just always done it. And how how they targeted comics, I don't know. And for me, so. Not just Marvel, I know that's that's kind of yeah, that's kind of both Marvel apart, apart from those couple of Eclipse odd bods, and they were from the late seventies. But I'm, I I just had to show them off. I just thought the glorious artwork, particularly in night music, and just recently, and now I just I did Instagram every single cover of this collection. Now that's an issue zero. And that's an issue one. You know. You know how particular there are particular names in the Star Wars um, fraternity at the moment who are so banging on about diversity and inclusion. Just look at the covers and tell me about the characters. This is from twenty. Oh, what should I? Have? I'm sure this this is from the early two thousands, like two thousand and six, something like that. Now, tell me. If that isn't, I mean, you can't get more diverse than an alien, can you? <laughs> but like I say, this is another, this is a legacy collection I've picked up. Now, don't tell me that this isn't, no one can tell me that this isn't diverse. And also exciting, because you've got, I just showed you a cover there with Luke Skywalker on it. Now, oh my God, there's a woman on it. Um... Again, female female alien alert. Like I'm going to keep saying, the diversity and inclusion has been there for a long, long, long while, and has never been a problem. And bringing it right up to date, this is this is just one of my little personal choice for me, uh, Lady Lady Mechanica. Um, just these issues, and this is um. A steampunk, a steampunk story, uh, uh, created by um, it's like Joe Joe uh, Bennett's artwork, and it's it's a beautiful thing. Like I, I just picked up, you just don't see them around. They're not a million pound each each issue, but you try finding them. But that's what makes comic books, uh, comic book collecting, exciting. But a couple of odd bods, but again. You know, Arcane on Netflix, a, a, a properly steampunk based on a game. This was the same thing. The same, the, 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 the same genre. And it follows a female uh, protagonist. No one's got any problem with that. And she's not letting it, she's not letting it all hang out, is she? And she's a strong, and she is a strong, independent woman. That they all cry that they need more of, but not in comics. They are like they, they've taken aim in comics, and and the last one just to illustrate. If you want to take a look at this cover of Strange Academy, this is twenty twenty, I think. Um, forgive me if I'm wrong. Um, you got everything there. Everything mystical, you got black, white, yellow, blue. <laughs> plus magic, plus excitement, and no one is doing anything. And I'm I am surprised, just on a personal note, with with, with this particular comic. If you haven't picked it up, if you haven't read it. And the graphic novel is available. 
uh, for Strange Academy. It's basically Hogwarts in the Marvel Universe. That's a pitch. That, that is a pitch. It's called Strange Academy because obviously it is to Doctor Strange is the Sorcerer Supreme. Um, oh, here he is with um, Dormammu's kid. So this is just. Oh look, there's a there's a girl character in it. Anyway. You get my point. I think I'm lab I think I'm labouring the point, but I think what I'm trying to get is that um as a hobby, comic book collecting I've enjoyed I've enjoyed all my life, but now I'm doing these videos, obviously I think about different bits and pe different aspects of the hobby a little bit more. And I've got to say through those few examples I've just shown you, you know, through through licensed this this Star Wars, this, this Star Wars licensed stuff, but the, it predates it predates the Disney Disney crap. You know, I can just go through I can just go through these covers and you and you can't you know don't don't tell me that this isn't something that Dismal Minus should have been doing with their, their C. Oh, anyway, we're not going to go there because this is about comics. So, and thanks mostly, thanks mostly to Paul at Comics and Fantasy in Hornchurch, Essex for, for these particular bad boys, for Nova and the Annihilation. He, he done me a load of the Annihilation stuff. Um, it was a, it was a beautiful, Brilliant run, brilliant run, um, and the Strange Academy stuff. But you tell me if that lot from the late seventies into the two thousand and well, right, more or less right up to date with Strange Academy. Tell me if that isn't uh, not perfect, but tell me if that isn't diverse and inclusive. And I know this has been a bit of a weird one. I don't normally do these comic book haul uh, videos. But um, again, I think I had to get that out of my system a little bit. Um, so until next time, quick thank you to you nutty, naughty 20,000 subscribers. Loving you. Love it, and I hope you love this. Please keep commenting. Please just give me a little comment. You, you, you're getting your idea now how much I love it when you comment. And give me a thumbs up if you do like it, because it really, really does help. Otherwise, I'm just going to get buried by YouTube um, and 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 algorithms. Um, and until next time, and until the next ramble. Um, love you all. Adios. <laughs>